Jesus. I right, guess who was dumb? Too dumb to empty the fucking recycle bin. Uh, this fucking stream eats up like 10 gigabytes of space a day. And uh, it's like an 8 terabyte drive that all these are floating on. But uh, shit adds up in a heartbeat there. Uh, so <laughs> let me just let people know we back. Ah, so dumb of me. Let's see. Cool. All right. So let me see if I can get some people back. I hate it when uh, shit cuts off right at the beginning of the stream. <sighs> well, today's off to a uh, thrilling start right there. But. I'm feeling that's not going to bode ill for our editing. I feel like we're going to knock it out of the fucking park today. All right, so our previous chapter, uh, the introduction of Kaiser Duchance, is pages... Blah, 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 pages fucking 31 through... Not 31. I think it's like 20 through whatever. Yeah, pages 20 through, uh, pages 20 through 38. So it's about 18 pages of the introduction of, um, what, like, don't let me spoil it for you, but that's probably going to be our antagonist for this, uh, story. Unless we have, uh, some crazy rewriting that goes on in the remainder of this. So I think it does an okay job. Ah, uh, right, let me... Rearrange my whole getup over here. I'm taking that uh, anti Rona NAD. Let me see. I think we just killed our entire viewer base by uh, having that hard drive shit out. Let's buy a new one. <sighs> I've been meaning to clean up those drives forever. But, uh, you know how it goes. <laughs> Taking the Acura pill. And uh, yeah, this is chapter number one, uh, Big Ass T. Uh, so just to, because we can still remember what's going on, uh, to recap in um, chapter number one, we met uh, Lemon and Maybe. In chapter number two, we met, uh, you don't know his name yet, but the red-haired kid's name is Matthew Hausterlitz. Uh, and we met uh, Kaiser Duchance, uh, who is going to be Things are not going to get better for Kaiser Duchance. I'm just putting it out there. <laughs> and then, the hell? My ceiling leaking? Oh, God. It'd be that kind of week, man. Pop a bike tire on the other stream. Uh, ceiling's leaking. Wait, hold on just a second. I'm going to have to get up on that roof. See if we got a problemo up there. It's happened before. Better believe it. But, uh, let's get uh, into number one. Gabriel, don't you hang around that boy. That Jew is trouble. That Jew is going to get you in juvie. Get you in juvie instead of himself, and he's going to laugh about it with all them others. Don't get mixed in with them. They'll use you up and throw you away. Stick with your own kind. All right, so this doesn't track at all. Let me see. <laughs> Jews gonna Gabriel, don't ha don't you hang around that boy? That Jew is trouble. Uh. Yeah, so what what really she should be doing here is kind of like that uh, preacher diction. Uh, hold on just a second. Let me see if I gotta refresh this whole fucking thing to see anything. Mm. 
boom. So I think in the story, these guys are uh, Haitian, essentially. Um, and uh, honestly, it doesn't uh, it doesn't really track for me the way that she's talking here. Gabriel, don't you hang around that boy. That Jew is trouble. That Jew is going to get you in juvie. Get you in juvie instead of himself, and then he's going to laugh about it with all them others. Don't you get mixed in with them. They'll use you up and throw you away. Don't you get mixed in with them, Gabriel. They'll use you up and throw you away. Stick with your own kind. Be with the righteous folks. Not them what killed your lord. <laughs> it's a shame because, like, I really have uh, met so many of these women, um, like for extended periods of time, uh, and hung out with them and work with them, and I should be able to write a, uh, a better angry Haitian grandmother than this. It just doesn't track right. Gabriel, don't you hang around that boy. Let's try this this way. Don't you hang around that boy. No. Gabriel. Don't you hang around that boy. That Jew is trouble. All right, so Jew shouldn't be capitalized. <laughs> That's part of why it's weird there. Let's just take out that. And that goo. Gabriel, don't you hang around that boy. That Jew's going to get you in juvie. Get you in juvie instead of himself. And then he's going to laugh about it with all them others. Don't you get mixed in with them, Gabriel. They'll use you up and throw you away. Stick with your own kind, boy. Be with the righteous folks, not them what killed your lord. Hell yeah. I wish I talked like that every single day. Just inexplicably thick fucking Haitian accent. Constant religious references speckled in as I'm like <laughs> correcting somebody's paper or something like that. Ridiculous. Hmm. That's a lonely day in that old restream chat. All right, well, finally, we have three viewers. And, I, you know, one thing that kind of boggles the mind is usually we have, like, a bunch of people on Periscope. Mostly it's, like, the Chinese government keeping tabs on us. But, you know, like, they're Chinese government or people, too. I'm happy to have their viewership. Shout-outs to the fucking FBI. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> you guys still have to keep tabs on me after all these years. I haven't done anything fucking interesting for them in like the longest time and they still got to watch. Oh, I feel bad. And I put out a lot of content too. It's like, uh, you know, five or six hours a shit a week, or maybe more. Like when we're doing these editing streams, the agent assigned to me has to record, he has to like review. I hope he's just real bad at his job. Like he just, you know, playing video games the whole time I'm just like nodding on and off. But, um, yeah, that's, that's the thing. Once you get that, Top secret clearance. They're on you for life. Mm. All right, so there's P Cap again. All right, so Peter Cap and I were talking about um, uh, external USB monitors. And there's a new, new feature in OSX called Sidecar, uh, which lets you use an iPad as a uh, external monitor. So I'm going to fool around with it and uh, see if I can get it happening. Oh, there's Jira. All right, now, now I feel like people are... Uh, All right, so let's take a look. Let's take one more listen to this. Uh, Gabriel, don't you hang around that boy. That Jew's going to get you in juvie. Get you in juvie instead of himself. And he's going to laugh about it with all them others. Don't get mixed in with them, Gabriel. They'll use you up and... Uh... Don't you get mixed in with them Jews, Gabriel. They'll use you up... See, now if we wanted to get uh, even deeper into uh, this black lady being an anti-Semite, we could uh, uh, change use you up into suck you dry uh, to get into that like blood sucking uh, like thing. But I think it's it's a little much, honestly. 
we can tell that this lady doesn't like the juice. We don't need to get too deep into it. Don't you get... Uh, what do we got? Good morning. I believe it's nearly Dona 30. Give that character a pony. <laughs> Give the character a pony? So, I don't, I don't think, um, in the context of the story, that like Gabriel Thibodeau can get a pony. Uh, look at this fucking perm shit I got happening on the front of my head, too. Um, so Jira says, I'm here. I can start now, boy. All right, hold on. This is driving me crazy. <laughs> fucking stupid. Get off of there, hair. God, I get some fucking grease or something to keep this shit in Because I'm not getting a haircut. That ain't happening at the present time. Uh, yeah, so I, I think the blood suck. Thank you so much, by the way, uh, Raborn, for that $6.66. I'll tell you where it's going. Right here to coffee and uh, editing. So all the money that uh, gets sent in on the stream, we send it right to editors. <sighs> I'll see if I can work in some kind of fucking Equestria reference that's subtle for this character. But it's difficult, right? Because I don't... All I know is that they're ponies and they're purple. When the fuck am I going to work that in? I don't have the background to uh, uh, fuck with this. Let me see. All right, let's... Uh, Gabriel, don't you hang around that boy. That Jew's going to get you in juvie. Get you in juvie instead of himself. And then he's going to laugh about it with all them others. Don't you get mixed in with them Jews, Gabriel. They'll use you up and throw you away. Stick with your own kind, boy. Be with the righteous folks, not them what killed your lord. Better. All right, that track's like a little bit better there. Um, so Spathy Wah's phone <coughs> didn't beep. All right, yeah, I, I believe this lady's voice now. Yes, Grandma, Gabriel says. Uh, I think she has a name. Uh, and we should say, hold on. Grandma Thibodeau, Miss Thibodeau. Okay, so that's how we spell it. <sighs> All right. Whoop, whoop. All right, let's go back here to, uh, don't read this part. There we go. Can do. Sign these. All right. Mm-hmm. What do we got here? Oh, shout out to Dioga7 right here. Yeah, welcome to this uh, stream. Fix that after after, uh, or I'm going to commit terrorist threats. Where's the after after? What the fuck are you talking about there? Uh, Logic has arrived from Burger Town to provide editing. I should get some hamburgers. Wait, I shouldn't get hamburgers. God damn it. <laughs> Wait, is Uriel... Let me look at that name. I'm pretty sure that is not a... Uh, he's one of the Archangels. Yeah. Yeah, it's a... Oh, cool. Yeah, Uriel uh, means light of God. Alright, we're going to give her the name uh, Uriel right here. Uh, Diogo says, um, I know nothing about writing. Uh, I've only looked into the writing category uh, because of a short film strip I'm writing, but this is relaxing. Haha. -ha. Uh, yeah, feel free. Like, if you have any um, questions or anything about the process of putting together uh, a script or a novel or whatever, this is like my 10th uh, novel. 
So I've been doing this for a long ass time. And mainly like the best advice that I can give is about establishing a writing practice and um, how to consistently be prolific. Because if, if I'm not um, the greatest writer of all time, I'm getting up there with the uh, uh, being prolific. We do this like almost every single day and uh, we get a lot done. Uh, but I digress. So yes, Grandma, Gabriel says. Miss Uriel Thibodeau has given Gabriel uh, Okay, cool. Separate paragraph. Miss Uriel Thibodeau was given, uh, and I think we spell Thibodeau wrong. No, Thibodeau is, uh, uh it's permissible. Okay. <laughs> Imagine being named Thibodeau. I would go through life named that. That's, that's a wild name. Let's see. Miss Uriah Thibodeau has given her grandson Gabriel this lecture almost 20 times. The first time was after, uh, there's the after after that you were talking about, yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Let's see. Miss Uriel Thibodeau has given Gabriel this lecture almost 20 times, beginning right after he and his friend Matthew got arrested for tagging a school bus. That cost him 15 hours of community service. Picking up busted crack pipes and used condoms strewn all along the lawns of Westside Park. Miss Uriel Thibodeau has given Gabriel this lecture almost 20 times, beginning right after he and his friend Matthew got arrested for tagging a school bus. That stunt cost him 15 hours of community service. Picking up busted crack pipes and used condoms from the lawns of Westside Park. Fifteen hours and they would only let him do three hours at a stretch. It took forever. It wasn't even a good tag. Gabriel has a new one now that's way better. Thurs T with a big ass T. Uh, okay. So what are we doing right here? We're establishing that um, uh, Gabriel... Oh, yeah, by the way, like if uh, for, I guess, Diego 7 uh, or whatever here, our editing method, um, let, me, let me just uh, sort of break down how we do this whole thing. Uh, our editing method 
is that uh, first I'll write the story. Like we get a first draft done of the completed novel before I show it to anybody. I try not to even talk to people about a story while I'm working on it because um, there's this mechanism in your brain where if you tell somebody that you intend to do before you do it, uh, and they're like, oh, okay, great, sounds cool, whatever. You get a little of that like reward circuit activation there, and there's studies on this, and it saps you of the motivation to actually do the thing that you intended to do. Uh, so don't do that. <laughs> don't, don't tell anybody about things you intend to do. Only tell the people about things after you have done them, and you will get so much more done in your life. Um, and I, I firmly believe this is very difficult to not to tell people about something you're excited about, but if you can hold back, um, there, you know, it's worthwhile. Uh, so I complete the whole, uh, first draft. Um, and then normally I would have just an editor, uh, go right to it. Uh, but as I've gotten older and I'm no longer dating a professional editor, uh, then I've, I've been forced into like doing my initial edits myself. And I think you should do a, um, edit or a rewrite of your, uh, if you don't have access to a professional editor that will work for free, I think it's really smart to do uh, your first edit yourself. Um, so the way that I do it is first I'll do uh, an edit where I read through the entire thing and uh, make any changes that I've like left notes for myself. As I'm, as I'm, You'll see me as I'm editing, I'll leave uh, comments for myself on things that I want to change later. And generally I'm thinking about, you know, ah, how can I make this story better? Like what parts of this work? What parts don't work? What do I like? What do I not like? And we'll try to make those changes in something I'll do off camera. I'll do like essentially a, a, an edit or a rewrite or a proofread. And basically we just do a pass. Um, then we come here to this. This is the first real edit uh, of this story. And one thing I've learned is that if you read each line aloud uh, and really kind of chew on it, for a little bit, like you'll see me reading a uh, line a bunch of times until I find one that sounds right. Um, it is uh, triggering a different part of your brain than if you are reading the line and just like kind of reading through it. And it forces you to focus on each single word because you have to say each one of those words as you're uh, reading through it. And I uh, think that this is, uh, just if, if I had to like put a number on it, I would say that uh, my books are coming out like 20 to 30 percent better as a consequence of doing it this way oh shit it's meep sheep what's up cam the cam man cam uh so yeah this is and i'm i'm like recommending this to other people who write just taking the time to read something aloud and i remember when i first um started thinking about doing things this way uh, i was dating a woman and like the idea and this is like i was dating a woman who was editing all my work and like the idea of sitting in another room and like reading and her like hearing the shit that I was going on was giving me flashbacks uh, to uh, some childhood trauma. Uh, it just felt so uncomfortable with the idea. And I couldn't think of like going out to a park and just like reading aloud or something like that. Um, but um, now I live on my own and uh, there's nobody to give a shit if I read every morning. Uh, but I also got like, um, as time went on, like much more... Uh, confident or arrogant, pick which one you want to do. And now I can just read this in front of uh, an audience of amazing people right here. And I just don't give a shit anymore. I've, I've lost all shame in my advanced age. But uh, anyhow, yeah, that's a, that's a little bit of my uh, theory on editing. Uh, I definitely don't recommend that everybody uh, edit live on their Twitch stream. One, because you'll steal my thunder and I don't have a big audience. Um, but also two, um, because it just makes for a better book. All right, so Ryborn says to stop talking about myself and edit the damn book. We do have, we have to have some of these asides for the community, Ryborn. All right, back to uh, <laughs> Mrs. Ural Thibodeau has given Gabriel this lecture about almost 20 times. Uh, let's say at least 20 times. Mr. Ryan Thibodeau has given Gabriel this lecture all, at least 20 times. The first was after he and his friend Matthew got arrested for attacking a school bus. Stop joining independent clauses with a comma, you dingus. Well, that's why we just cut this into a whole fucking thing. Let's see.
And so here's what we can do right here. A stunt caught us in 15 hours of picking up busted crack pipes and used condoms from the lawns of Westside Park. Fifteen hours of community service, and the juvenile corrections officer would only let him do three hours at a stretch. It took forever. It wasn't even a good tag. Gabriel has a new one now that's way better. Thurs T with a big ass T. <coughs> and that's the chapter title right there. Big ass T. Behind Grandma, a hundred... Everything in this book is uh, self-narration style. It's all through the voice of a narrator. Um, like, it's all... Basically, this entire book... Um, it should all read as if uh, it's being li li uh, narrated by Lemon, right? So we want the entire narration of the voice uh, of the book to be relatively consistent. Uh, it could come out of Lemon Lemoyne's mouth. And, um, and so that puts us into like partial omniscience, right? Because Lemon is telling a story, uh, so he knows things that, uh, uh, that other people can't. But just to, to uh, there are some novels where you'll use uh, different narration styles for different like different poe and v and stuff in most of these places um it should track as if this is a story told uh by lemon the guy that we met in the first uh very first one. Oh, and speaking of which uh we have to give who did the i think jira uh, got the point for that uh, edit of that's his first point uh for uh the uh, repetition of a word that he got right there um, yeah, no, I think it's a totally fair question. And like, honestly, it's always good to like, think about the POV that you're using in a story. Uh, POV is one of the most important things in any, any book, whatever. <laughs> um, so part of the reason why we're using um, a juvenile corrections officer there instead of juvie correction, we used juvie a little bit earlier uh, there. Uh, when his grandmother is talking, um, it just, it's like a little bit easier for the reader to understand. Like, um, <laughs> oh God, I can't eat. Uh, what do we got here? Grandma stands with her hands on her hips. I and Gabriel. And Gabriel with justifiable says Grandma stands with her hands on her hips, eyeing her only grandson with justifiable suspicion. Behind her, a hundred faces smile down at Gabriel. Glossy shots of Dolly Parton and Ronald Reagan and the black Nethermen from Channel Six, all autographed. Yep, logic gets a point. Mm -hmm. Bam. 
Grandma stands with her hands on her hips, eyeing her only grandson with just a file slip. Uh, yeah. Um. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That is a good comma. Uh, did we change what to eyeing? No, I think I think you're behind. Oh, yeah. Did it even do anything to change the YouTube uh, latency to real time? Like, is this any faster or whatever there? Uh, what time is it right now? Do I have a second count? Uh, what are we saying here? What is Spathywa? Did we change it to eyeing the first time? No, it's not real time. Um, yeah, I wonder, I wonder how we can test the latency or whatever of this motherfucker. Uh, I, I, let's, I don't know. Let's not think about, uh, just more frequent polling. Yeah, I wonder, I wonder where the lag is. Okay. Um, we're not making any progress. Uh, so. Damn, I missed the gravid streams uh a little bit. I mean this is Are you are you just we'll add women later in this. Uh uh real time would mean okay, so I can tell it's not real time because it pulls multiple messages and updates. So from my uh view, um so you may be thinking about the polling uh that you see on the stream above us, but I'm watching a separate monitor, like right over here. Um, where the messages I think are appearing in pretty close to real time because it's only pulling one message at a time uh, on the panel that I see. Uh, pulling much more frequently, like one second. Okay, yeah, like a... Yeah, the hardest part of this process is just not knowing uh, how far behind somebody is when they're like, oh, like, look at this thing. Okay. Glossy headshots of Dolly Parton and Ronald Reagan and the Black Weathermen from Channel 6. Uh, Channel 6 would be uh, uppercase. Oh yeah, we do have to be, oh, I, I forgot all about that. But yeah, like the consistency between using eyeing with an E, Y, E. Yeah, that'll come up like a hundred other places in this thing. So we'll, 
We'll just fucking forget about it and then hopefully do a find replace at the end. Okay. Does it matter that the weatherman is black? Yes. That's why she likes the weatherman from Channel 6. Oh, oh fuck. This is one where I'm going to catch heat from other people, isn't it? <laughs> uh, oh, fuck, how important is this to the story? Ah. Uh. <laughs> There, we'll we'll change it to funny. Uh, no. Ah, uh, I hate that I have to make that fucking change. I mean, at this point, because keep in mind also, this is like two thousand and four, um, in New York. Like, more than one TV channel is going to have a black weatherman. Um, let me see. Maybe if you didn't... <laughs> Spake me lost, is, I guess, is okay if you self-publish. I mean, he's right. This is the kind of thing that an editor will be like, mm, you can't say black weatherman. Um... <sighs> I hate that we even have to like consider this. Um, mm, let me see. Because there's a lot of racist shit in this book. Like straight up. You know, like we just came up from a... Um, uh, <laughs> uh, and it's it's just like an aesthetic. Uh, let's see. There we go. We'll just call him a Haitian weatherman from Channel 6. There we go. Yeah, let's, let's just, uh, you know, like, uh, another part, too, is, like, then the reader can understand, oh, like, she likes the Haitian weatherman because she is also Haitian. Um, <laughs> so, apparently, YT chat polls faster now. Uh, yeah, because we did set um, YT chat to real time. I don't think that we can do Twitch in uh, real time because you have to be partnered uh, to get that.
I hate uh, YouTube chat because I can't up and enter. There we go. Uh, Meep suggests we use that <laughs> that nigga from Channel Six. Uh, I feel like that'll derail our narrative a little bit there. Let me see. One night after Grandma went to bed, Gabriel nudged the picture of Bar Bob Barker just a few degrees out of place. Five minutes later, she was out in the living room and... Okay, I really like, so this is just like a weird aside, right? Um, so this, this whole paragraph could probably be cut, um, but this is how I'm like trying to, uh, one night after grandma went to bed, Gabriel nudged the picture of Bob Barker just a few degrees out of place to see how long it would take her to notice. Five minutes later, she appeared in her nightgown. Uh, hold on.
It's true. Like metal ruler, like you could whack a kid with a metal ruler, but she's more of like a hit your kid with a big wooden spoon. <laughs> All right, let's try this now. One night after Grandma went to bed, Gabriel nudged the picture of Bob Barker a few degrees out of place to see how long it would take her to notice. Five minutes later, he heard her bedroom door creep open. Armed with a metal ruler, Grandma shuffled out in her nightgown and set Bob Barker to write. Then she went into the kitchen and got the big wooden spoon and walloped Gabriel in the back of the head so hard tears came to his eyes. She never said a word. She just washed off the spoon and went back to bed. Gabriel never touched another frame. The welt on the back of his head took three days to go away. Damn. So Meep got uh, whale with uh, wind spoons. A uh, welt on the back of your head that takes three days to go away is a serious clack. Uh, I'm just putting it out there. <laughs> Ooh. And the best part is it would be in the shape of the spoon too. Maybe it'd have like the little cup ring or whatever. God damn. Uh, I like that all of us that have uh, been walloped by our parents know exactly what this is all about. Wooden spoons when you love them. Metal rulers when you don't. Grandma's apartment is all potpourri and crinkling plastic and lemon pledged. Yeah, so we call her Angela Bissau here. Everything that can be uh, Grandma's apartment was all popper is all potpourri and crinkling plastic and lemon pledge. Pledge is a brand name. Mm -hmm. uh, involuntary flashbacks to his grandma's house. Well, good. Then we're doing it right. Grandma's apartment is all potpourri and crinkling plastic and lemon pledge. Everything that can be polished shines. Everything that can't has been gone over a half a dozen times with the dust buster. Miss Uriel Thibodeau worked for 44 years at St. Mary's. She was the head cleaner in charge of all four operating theaters. Six days a week, and she would have gone seven if not for church. Grandma hated the off-day cleaners worse than Satan himself. The wall by the bathroom has pictures of Grandma hugging nearly every surgeon she ever worked with. The wall by the bathroom has pictures of Grandma hugging nearly every surgeon she ever worked with, and a smaller wall by the kitchen has pictures of, her, of the family. Another is of all her friends from church. Gabriel tries to listen to his grandmother. She tells him to get good grades and to do his homework, not to cut class, to stay away from Matthew Housterless. Gabriel tries, but the world conspires against him. Gabriel tries, but the world conspires against him, and his resolve to be good never follows him far out of the spotless apartment. He's only Gabriel in the apartment and in court. Elsewhere, everyone calls him thirsty. Second week of freshman year, he was slurping loudly at a drinking fountain in the hall. Oh, yeah, yeah.
so if the brand has been generalized to where, um, yeah, so essentially you can leave it lowercase if, um, oh, fuck, yeah, we have to capitalize dust buster too. I'm going to give that one to logic. Uh, yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, like if, if something is level le uh, generalized to the level of um, Kleenex or Kleenex and Xerox are the ones that people Gus Buster. Oh, I like the sound of the Gus Buster. That'd be a good name for a band. Hell yeah. Mr. Ralph Thibodeau worked for 44 years at St. Mary's Hospital as the head cleaner in charge of all four operating theaters. She worked six days a week, and she would have gone seven if not for church. Grandma hated the off-day cleaners worse than Satan himself. I love that. Like, if you know anything about um, uh, dust bust. All right, let's, let's see if it's two words. It's one word there. No, it's it's a single yeah, it's a single word. Lose points. Yeah, it's not it's not two words. Yeah, and in fact, uh yeah, definitely the brand name is Dustbuster. God, they're weird looking now. Whew, like fucking alien weapons. It's kind of gangsta. <laughs> I mean, you can't be right all the time. If we were right all the time, I wouldn't be doing this fucking edit. You know, I would have gotten it right the first day. Mm-hmm. Originally alien weapons, later repurposed as gangsta sex toys. Yeah, I was thinking it, me, but I just didn't want to say it. Thank you for saying what we're all thinking. Uh, <laughs> Everywhere else, people call him thirsty. The second week of freshman year, Gabriel was slurping at a drinking fountain, and Mr. Clarence, the algebra teacher, called out, That's one thirsty kid. Yeah, that's a colon. Everyone laughed, and the name stuck so hard, even teachers slip up and call him thirsty sometimes. Gabriel could tell what... Gabriel could see. <laughs> Gabriel could tell right away this was how things were going to be, and he didn't fight it. Then just after Christmas break, freshman...
That same year, just after Christmas break, Gabriel got really sick and had to go to the hospital. Type 1 diabetes. Mm -hmm. Uh, let me see. All right. So, yeah, like, Clarence is indeed misspelled. Who's going to get that? Spathiwa. And... <sighs> Type 1. Let's take a look. Mm, no. Oh, so. Uh, let me see. These guys just do all lowercase right here. Uh, let's see what Wikipedia does. No, it doesn't look like you capitalized diabetes there. Um, oh, so uh, when people make an edit uh, that is accepted, we give them a point. Um, and if you make a really good edit, we'll give you multiple points. Like if you like do something fucking amazing. You know, that hasn't happened yet. Although we had one that was like borderline, um, that I was like, ah, oh, such a good edit. So we don't capitalize diabetes. <laughs> uh, Spathiwa didn't get a point for actually uh, Spathiwa is going to get a point for that Haitian suggestion because <sighs> on, honestly like it, I would love to just be able to call like he's black um, but honestly like if we're going to go to the effort to do something that's like edgy and uh, that people will consider borderline racist I want it to be for something more important than a fucking weatherman. You know what I mean? Like, there is a line later in the book um, that is just super duper race. I think there's like a hard R drop somewhere in this motherfucker. And I want to, I want it to be earned, right? Um, just because of the, the current political climate here where people are fucking insane in the membrane. But um, I think, I think it's, uh, <laughs> it's not okay. All right, so we're giving him that point. Uh, yeah, y'all got to keep chabs because I'm I'm like thinking about uh, Thirsty's diabetes right here. I'm not thinking about points. That same year, just uh, yeah. Then just after Christmas break is Christmas break. Yeah, Christmas is capitalized. Break is not. Then just after Christmas break, Gabriel got really sick and had to go to the hospital. Type 1 diabetes. When the teachers found out, Mr. Clarence took Gabriel aside and apologized for the nickname. Gabriel told him to go fuck himself. Three days of in-school suspension for that, and he's got Mr. Clarence for algebra this year. He's definitely going to fail. Probably not just algebra. All right, so algebra is not capitalized in any of these. Let's see if that's consistent. Yeah, algebra is just lowercase. There's a lot of commas that I'd call missing. Um, I mean, commas are not... Keep in mind, too, like... uh. Commas are not part of our narrative style, right? Um, even when we're talking in this narrative style, we still uh, need to have like the correct punctuation. Um, so definitely call it if you feel like a comma should be missing. <sighs> mm -hmm. 
but uh yeah like it's you know get them points if you think an edit is there it's there uh we're, we're trying to make the most perfect novel that we can possibly do if it's a course it's capitalized uh Yeah, I don't think any of these would be capitalized there. Ooh, a course would be capitalized. All right, let's... Fuck. I like that Google. Not capitalized. Names of courses, like Algebra 101. Uh, yeah, so only when it's uh, part of a course. Oh, wait, hold on. There we go. Me pointed out, uh, Mr. Clarence, the algebra teacher, should have. Da, 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 da. Let's... Yeah, I don't think we need to... It's such a clunky sentence. The second week of freshman year, Gabriel was slurping at a drinking fountain, and Mr. Clarence called out, That's one thirsty kid! Everyone laughed. The nickname stuck so hard, even teachers slip up and call him thirsty sometimes. Gabriel could tell right away this was how things were going to be, and he didn't fight it. Cool. I actually really like, um, just as a character note, like, uh, this, uh, Gabriel is like, hey, people are gonna fucking call me thirsty. Like, what, what am I gonna do? And he doesn't fight it. And you'll see uh, a bunch of points in the, and we try to do more development of this particular character throughout the story. But like one of his um, character traits is like a certain permissiveness, like, all right, yeah, fuck it. I'm going, you know, whatever. I'll do it. Yeah. Um, uh, points denial is my new fetish. All right. So um, we're still going to give Meep Sheep a point because he's right uh, at the time. But like, I like cleaning up that sentence a little bit more. So we'll give him that point. Just to put him on the board. One. Uno point. And then... Uh, more after teacher. There we go. So points denial is my new fetish. Y'all so weird. All right, what do we got here? Uh, no, I think I think it was a good call at the time, but it's just not going to make it into the book. Yeah, algebra looks wrong. Uh, 
let's see. Yep, I agree with that. Ed. <laughs> My autobiography. It was a good call, but it didn't make it. When he got back to school, Mr. Clarence apologized for the next name. He actually seemed really sorry. Gabriel told him to go fuck himself. He racked up three days of in-school suspension for that one, and now he has Mr. Clarence for algebra this year. He's definitely going to fail, and probably not just algebra. Okay, so... Uh... Let's see... Told him to go fuck himself. All right, so Spathywaw gets a point for that one. All right, so here's uh, the deal here. He's definitely going to fail, and probably not just algebra. Um, it doesn't sound right. Uh, he's definitely going to fail, and probably more than just algebra. Eh, I don't. I think we got to stick with not just. There's too much homework. So much it seems impossible to even start. Yeah, uh, more than just algebra would sound more logical, but it just doesn't it doesn't track with the uh, the narrator's voice. Good chapter title, Big Ass T. Yeah, <laughs> I like, I like these. Uh, so, just FYI, as we're uh, as we're going through this edit, if you see a chapter title that you think could be better, um, let me know. Because like some of these are real good, some of them eh, I could use like a little zazz. Uh, <laughs> so it is an option. None of these are set in stone.
All the classes are boring and there's too much homework. The teachers pass out so much it seems impossible to even begin. Every night, Thirsty tells himself he'll do it in the morning before school. And every morning, he forgets. Book Rack? Mm-hmm. Yeah, we no edits yet. We're not uh we're not done chewing on this thing.
Okay. Yeah, right, let's uh let's take a gander. All the classes are boring and there's too much home home. Classes are boring, and there's way too much homework. The teachers pass out so much it seems impossible to even begin. Every night, Thirsty tells himself he'll do it in the morning before school, and every morning he sleeps too late or forgets. The neglected homework haunts his backpack until one day he realizes... The neglected homework accumulates in his backpack until one day he realizes he's been lugging around an entire ream of unfilled worksheets. Okay, I like this change here. This was me in high school. Uh, realistically, probably only passed because I'm white. Good luck, thirsty. Yeah, man. I like. I think. I think all of us can relate to fucking up big time during high school. Uh, I, I don't think any of us would be here if we belonged in high school. <laughs> I just should have never. They, they should have just cut me loose when I was like fucking twelve years old and let me work a job. Like honestly, I had no no business ever being in any kind of high school or higher education or whatever, like not, not made for that. Not at all. Classes are boring, but yeah, you can, I, I hope, I hope like this uh, rings true with your own experience there. Cam the Cam and Cam. Classes are boring and there's way too much homework. The teachers pass out so much. Classes are boring and there's way too much homework, so much it seems impossible to even begin. Every night Thirsty tells himself he'll do it in the morning before school, and every morning he sleeps too late or forgets. The neglected homework accumulates in his backpack until one day he realizes he's been lugging around an entire ream of paper every day. <laughs> until he's been lugging around an entire ream of it. Thirsty dumps them all in the trash can at the end of his street. For days afterward, there are unfilled worksheets on the quadratic method and the teapot dome scandal fluttering around the block. Oh, I love that. I, I, I really, I really feel like um, that paragraph like uh, captures the essence of being a fuck up in high school.
It feels so much lighter afterward, but all those zeros are adding up. Grandma doesn't have a telephone. The school mails out little green truancy postcards when he misses days, and they too get thrown in the trash. And they too find their... Grandma doesn't have a telephone. The school mails out little green truancy postcards when he misses days and Thirsty intercepts them. Grandma's been using a walker since last Christmas, and now she only leaves the apartment to go to church on Saturday. Every week it uh Okay, so we need to make a change up here um, because of the six and seven days a week uh, thing here. Uh, because they're Seventh-day Adventists, right? Okay, cool. I don't actually say Sunday uh, there. Um, so she wouldn't work on Saturday because they're Jehovah's Witnesses. Or maybe they're fucking Pentecostals or something. I don't know. I don't know. She definitely goes to church on Saturday there, so he can't be Pentecostal. Mm, I would say that she'd be a morning goer for the most part. She seems like one of them get to bed early types. Grandma doesn't have a telephone. The school mails out little green truancy postcards when Gabriel misses days. Grandma's been using a walker since last Christmas, and now she only leaves the apartment to go to church on Saturday. Grandma's been using a walker since last Christmas, and now she gets her groceries delivered and only leaves the apartment to go to church on Saturday. Every week it takes them a little longer to get to church, and Gabriel sweats something crazy in his too tight church suits that's gone. Every week it takes them a little longer to get to church. And Gabriel sweats something crazy in it. The whole time Gabriel is sweating in his too tight church suit that's gone shiny at the elbows and knees. I like that. Uh, I don't think we needed something crazy. <clears throat> 
Grandma doesn't have a telephone. The school mails out little green truancy postcard when Gabriel misses days. But he's the one who checks the mailbox downstairs. Grandma's been using a walker since last Christmas, and now she gets her groceries delivered. And now she only leaves the apartment to go to church on Saturday. Every week it takes them a little longer to get to the church. Mm hmm. And Gabriel is sweating every step in his too tight church suit that's gone shiny at the elbows and knees. Every week it takes them a little longer to get to Kingdom Hall, and Gabriel's uncomfortable. And every second of it is uncomfortable for Gabriel in his too tight church suit that's gone shiny at the elbows and knees. He hates it, but he goes every Sabbath without fail. He keeps his room perfectly clean. Whew. Every week it takes them a little longer to get to Kingdom Hall, and every second of it is uncomfortable for Gabriel in his too tight church suit that's gone shiny at the elbows and knees. He hates it, but he goes every Sabbath without fail. He keeps his room perfectly clean and runs whatever errands his grandma asks. and runs errands for Grandma whenever she asks. He never talks back. Can I go, Grandma? Gabriel asks. She frowns, but finally nods yes. You check the mail when you come home, Grandma demands. Mm -hmm. Oh, there's a big pee cap. Uh, all right, tapped out. Gotta get some sleep. Yeah, man, sleep it up. I think I'm gonna I'm gonna work on it. But later today, uh, I'm thinking about doing like a a sort of uh, Dungeons and Dragons type RPG stream. I think I'm gonna float it on Fnet and so forth. I think it's gonna be like an open uh, fucking people can just scroll in and we're gonna try out this Rapazores thing. But I, I don't know. 
uh, we'll, we'll see how that works out. So I'll probably do that mid afternoon or something. If I don't spend all day playing video games, which is generally what I do all day. But <laughs> you check the mail when you come home, she demands. Grandma's always waiting to see if one of the requests for an autograph she mailed off has come in. There's a whole closet full of old pictures she's gotten tired of. The autograph wall is a highly competitive space. Only Sinatra and Bob Barker have tenure. Thank you, ma'am, Thirsty says, and he's out the door before she can change her mind. He grabs his big yellow jacket and hits the street, ready to make some money. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. All right, so... Uh, was that only like three pages? Hold on, let me see. It's like five pages uh, for this chapter. So, uh, Big Ass T. That's chapter one of this book. And uh, I, would, I would say this is definitely like a little bit more of a telly than a showy type uh, chapter. So we got through 995 words today. Uh, oh shit, Necromunda and Shadowrun, hell yeah. All right, so day six. Okay, and then at the end of this day, right here, uh, Spathiwa is leading the pack with 29, but Logic's right at his heels with uh, 16 uh, points right there. And I'm not going to push it too hard today, uh, because we uh, we tried pretty hard on that chapter. But um, I think we made some significant improvements there. Uh, I really... Uh, the voice of uh, Uriel Thibodeau is much better. It was just... it was real janky. This, this paragraph here at the top uh, was pretty shitty. And I think we've given some clarity. Uh, yeah, um, originally, in the very first draft of this, uh, Thirsty was like a bit character, but he just popped up at so many places that um, um, Thirsty is like what I would call a bridge to this other character, Matthew, who is like much more of a um, much more of a unrelatable character. He's like more of a sociopath type thing. And um, Thirsty is more to me at least he's like more of a likable character like i gotta understand what's running through thirsty's mind a little bit better you know he it's not hard to figure out what his desires are um and why he's doing the things that he's doing so thirsty uh and matthew are kind of like a pair and through the relationship through those two characters we can include matthew who is a little bit more of an asshole um that's my theory at least uh that was my thought when uh, doing this edit so hopefully that worked out. All right, everybody, thank you for tuning in. Uh, thank you for the assistance on the edits. Got some really good edits today. And uh, we're one chapter in, just uh, like 60 or 70 more to go. <laughs> but it's all worth it. Um, and I think the next chapter uh, takes place at Chinatown Fair Arcade. Bam! Uh, so like, uh, if you like arcades and shit like that, uh, I think there's some Street Fighter that's going to happen here. All right, everybody, have a good Sunday. Uh, never get high on your own supply. And stay alive, motherfuckers. Real talk.